come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it mm. or not, hmm. because we're on this quest to rule the podcast airwaves of the world and these the, the are in the world what and the underworld and the underworld the afterlife mm. that's right mm. these are the internet radio superstars sean holly michaela and i'm colin and tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by colin because he'd be the only that one that sounds like yes oh, oh. I love you a bit. You're, gonna, you're gonna hear that tone a lot <laughs> oh, colin. oh colin <laughs> what did we watch tonight? What did, uh, we, what did we endure tonight? Yeah, we to resurrect well, from the That's dead. right. We resurrected it uh, because it's the 30th anniversary of uh, the timeless goth of classic, right. The Crow. So, right. we watched, movie. so we watched The Crow. No. No. Oh, no. Okay. Bummer. And we then a bunch of people the- just turned off the podcast <laughs> right now. <Yeah. laughs> we watched the sequel, The Crow, City of Angels. From, from the, the year. year 1996. Yeah. Directed by? Uh, Tim Pope. Sounds Wait, like a fake name. Do we know Tim Pope? And do we know Tim um, Pope? He's a music video director. No okay. shit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. He's not, I don't think that he has done another feature film. I wonder why. The experience of making this one soured him on the movie business. Really? But he has done a lot of music <laughs> videos. I think mm. he did... Some like Marilyn Manson stuff. I would think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Nine Inch Nails, I'm sure. Something Probably, like that. Probably. I mean, somewhere yeah. in there, yeah. Tool, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the Cure. He mm-hmm. did some Cure videos. Ah, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. I mean, uh, uh, he worked with Iggy Pop before. That's how uh, Iggy Pop's in this movie. I was yeah. going to say, I'm, I'm assuming he worked with Iggy Pop. Well, before. Iggy Pop is in this movie for, I guess, two reasons. Yeah, he worked with uh, Tim Pope, but he was also, I think... Uh, James O'Barr, the guy who wrote the Crow comic book. And mm-hmm. I guess we have to get into like where all this came so from. But yeah. first, right? Yes. Okay. He patterned the physique of Eric Draven on Iggy Pop. So it was, oh, and, and, and I guess they Iggy, tried Iggy to. Iggy Pop is like a big comic book guy. So like, yeah. this is mm-hmm. his world. He like graphic novels and stuff. He's a big, he's big mm-hmm. into that stuff. Okay. And I guess they offered him the role of fun boy in the first Crow, but he wasn't able to do it because of touring, and so he ends up in the second one. Bad move on his part. Mm, yeah. 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 Should have should have been in the first how one. He feels about so it. how familiar are you? There's a remake, a remake of The Crow coming out this mm-hmm. weekend. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I wasn't able to check it out uh, prior <laughs> to the show. Um, how familiar are you with The Crow? I've seen it, but it's yeah, been a long surface time. level knowledge. I, I, yeah, I saw it uh, for the first time probably last year. I think. Oh wow! Oh wow! My, okay. Yeah, well, I think my review was it's the '90s '90s movie that ever '90s. Yes, yeah, um, that's it is. Legit. But, yeah, yeah. I saw it once. I uh, and you uh, uh, gave us some details about this movie, where I was just like, I don't remember that from the first movie. So I don't remember much. Yeah, from the first much. movie. From do the you crow. recall that the crow became such a uh, pop culture phenomenon that it basically was? I mean, hot topic, right? That it changed the career of Sting, the professional wrestler, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like all this stuff that you yeah. think like later on, it's like, wow, was this all like from the crow? There's a visual look to the crow yep. that kind of defined. I mean, what's the most most goth movie? Right, the crow. It's mm-hmm. the crow. I think that we all kind of go yeah. back to goth culture was a, a big thing. There were a lot of belts in that movie mm-hmm. with like the kind of industrial music and Nine Inch Nails. But goth always seems to have to me. It was like a combination of like vampire fetishist mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. yep. there's Fetish all like is a good word. like death obsessed. Yeah, you know, returning long lost love. Yeah, uh, I was gonna focus say, on. Um, I was gonna say second to the crow. I think a big goth movie would probably be Queen of the Damned. Yes, absolutely. Guess who's in this movie and also in Queen of the Damned, Ooh. Vincent Perez. The star Vincent Perez. Oh, wow. Oh a Swiss this man. This guy. Is he Swiss? He's Swiss. Oh, boy. Swiss. He sounds French. He does, yeah. unfortunately. Is he Swiss by birth, but probably actually a Frenchman. Could be. All I know is yeah. he's Swiss by birth. Uh, also, um, uh, he worked with Gerard Depardieu and a few things. Ah, well, ah. he was a big deal in, in, in France, I guess. Like yeah. uh, he had, because I remember at the time when this movie came out, I'm like, who the? F-? I had heard there was a movie called Queen Margot, which I think was a French movie that had kind of made import roads here through Miramax. I think. This movie comes from Miramax, mm. and they put him in this movie to, I think, see if he could be a leading man. Uh, he um, can't. 
Spoiler alert, he can't. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This guy is a, might be the biggest problem with this movie for me. It's, he's... Okay, why? You got to be invested in this character. The whole movie's centered yeah. around this character and your empathy for him. And this guy's acting is so bad, I can't empathize with him. It, it, not only that, you are very correct, but also, like, they don't do anything to make me care about this character and his revenge. No. I don't give a shit why he's trying to... That's why to I'm be- like, I'm torn. I, I don't know if it's him that I don't like the most or... The writing that I don't like the most, or the editing that I don't I like the most. Yeah, like it's, all, yeah it's all bad. I'm yeah. Credit bad. Colin. There's not many movies that I hate everything about it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, I guess he's the most forward facing problem. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. the hardest to yeah. uh, ignore, I guess. So, um, well, beyond but, the, I guess beyond the, the writing. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, which His delivery gonna... of lines is terrible. Terrible. And inaudible in some parts. Yeah. Yep. I think that's, so that's the, I remember seeing this opening night, right? I, I had been a fan of the, huge fan of The Crow. Movie changed my life. <laughs> you know, back <laughs> yeah. then it was like, this speaks a formative to formative movie. Yep. And <laughs> I had read the original um, graphic novel, which I guess uh, it was a comic series that came out and then it was collected and I got like the original trade paper bag mm-hmm. and it was I guess it defines what like goth you know that subculture is into mm-hmm. there's also that kind of um, heavy lean into like gothic literature from the past right there's like this goth has this kind of one foot in like the Victorian era you know <laughs> and then, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was written by a guy named James O'Barr. He uh, lost a girlfriend in a car crash. And the book, which, uh, you know, does have, there's a character named Eric Draven, and uh, his girlfriend is killed. They're both killed by a gang. And then he returns from the dead with the help of a crow and then basically kills them all, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it really has, when you're reading that book, it is like this guy just kind of pouring out, like, you know, his, his uh, angst everything? and grief. Oh, and, thanks. you know, I mean, it's a it's a heavy, you know, kind of, which kind of permeates the whole mm-hmm. thing. They go and they make a movie, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie's more Hollywood, I guess, than the comic book is. It has action sequences. It came uh, after Batman. Everybody kind of compared it to, like, a Batman-like experience. It's a dark, noir, you know, superhero kind of thing. And then... You know, it has, and Brandon Lee is killed on the mm-hmm, set of right. the movie, and a, a, you know, and so then that colors the whole movie, yeah. and probably right. made it more successful than it would have been if oh, he yeah. had survived. Oh, yeah. We oh, talked yeah. about him, didn't we? Watch um, the the one movie, r- not Rapid Fire. We watched Showdown, Showdown in Little Tokyo. Tokyo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so he was like kind of. I think that was his progression through Hollywood, right? It was Showdown, Rapid mm-hmm. Fire, and then yeah. The Crow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was kind of hoping that this would, you know, make him like a big bankable action star, mm-hmm. and then he died. So now you've got two years later. So The Crow becomes like a the movie becomes a hit, um, because it tapped into the zeitgeist at the time, and so they're like, okay, we're gonna put together a second movie now. Which I guess con- sounds kind of sacrilegious, like on its face, right? Mm-hmm. Like I died doing this. He is forever gonna remembered. <laughs> it's tasteless, <laughs> right. yeah. But if yeah. anybody can do sacrilegious, uh, the Weinstein, yes, the yes, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Did they release the first one, or did they just yes. acquire the rights for this one? Um, I thought the first one's a Miramax film. It wasn't is it? a Miramax yeah. film. Miramax Dimension. Yep. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, but they're notorious. Um, for this era. Bob and Harvey Weinstein were like the film fixers. I mean, there's all sorts of stories of them taking movies Mm -hmm. because they didn't care. I think they, they, they bankrolled like their Kevin Smith's and Quentin Tarantino's and people they thought were making like, you know, prestige movies, but they would crank out. We talked about, you know, Hellraiser Mm -hmm. and Halloween Mm -hmm. and anything that they could do, but they didn't care about the product like at all. And they would make mandates on, you're going to change this and you're going to change this so yep. much that Tim Pope like basically quit the business. So yep. I'll talk about a little bit about what they did to his movie. Ooh, Not curious. that it makes it, I don't mm, think I'm any curious. better. <laughs> oh no, nothing could. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm very curious. But this was the one they had the big, they realized with this one that like we have a hit, you know, thing on our hands. Mm. And so we're going in with the comic book adaptation and the music, you know, uh, soundtrack album and we're gonna go all out with crow merchandise for crow city of angels and then it bombed 
at the bottom. <laughs> Can't imagine why. <laughs> I think it did actually do pretty, fairly well the first weekend, mm-hmm. and then that and then everyone's just like, "Fuck this movie." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think word of mouth kind of killed it. Um, the Vincent Perez, mm-hmm. right? I think part of the problem with his uh, is, is he's he's got a French accent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The sound mix. Not good. Not good. <laughs> He's always shouting, mm-hmm. and so we kind of lose definition on the words. Right. So you don't know what the hell he's saying, and most of the stuff he's saying is like some kind of gobbledygook about one, yep. grow, two, three, four, and you're like, yeah. ah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Remind me, because like I said, I don't really remember a lot about the first one, but the character of the crow in the first one, he's very solemn and serious, right? Yeah. Brood- well, brooding. Brooding. Thank yes. you. He's brooding. He outbursts. Mm-hmm. Does he? Every now and again. I think part of, uh, because Brandon Lee felt like a, like a big, uh, uh, a boisterous person character. He felt like he had bravado, I guess, or something yeah. like, like he got it from his dad, but he's doing a lot of, uh, you know, when you watch that first movie, it does have like a horror aspect to it. Like, it's a movie that's taking the position of like a reanimated ghost, mm. right? So you're like with him as he's trying to like, there's scenes in that, that when you watch Batman begins, it's like, okay, there's a scene <laughs> in an alley where, you know, mm-hmm. this is the spooky dude who like jumps in, starts creeping you out before he attacks you, yeah. you know? Um, but I think both the comic book and the movie are trying to, uh, get at the idea that coming back from the dead basically makes you crazy. Like just dealing yeah. with because well, you've seen hell too, right? Like, isn't that, I mean, forgive me, but the remake, there's that line in the trailer where he's like, Oh, you go to hell. And he's like, I've already been or something like that. And he's like, I know, or, or no. you don't know what's waiting for you. And he's like, actually I do or something like that. In the, but in the remake. Yeah. Oh, that's in the trailer. That in this movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but huh. I just had a little bit of a jump scare. Cause I didn't realize who was directing this remake. Uh-huh. Oh boy, guys. Oh, it's the dude from uh, snow white and the huntsman. The man who's never directed a single successful movie in his <laughs> career. Rupert Sanders. Oh, wow. Oh, I've never uh Snow White and the Huntsman okay. and Ghost in the Shell. Oh no. Oh wow. Yeah. That's it. That's it, guys. This that is sucks. this is what who we, who we've handed the crow to. I'm guessing he's done a lot of music videos. <laughs> he, uh, no, just a done? few, but not not no, not really. He oh. was. He, I would say he's more famous for having an affair with, with Kristen, Kristen Stewart, Stewart than any yeah. movie he's directed. Oh, it's that guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You're right. He is because yeah, that's yeah. what I know him exactly. from. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so okay, uh, he's famous for having pictures uh, of him and Kristen in a Mini Cooper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what he's uh, famous it's, for. Gotcha. That's who the hands of the crow is in. Yeah, he's the one that brought them up. Be a good yeah. movie, you know. Again, no. they're they're trashing. I think the legacy of. Well, are they? This is a movie series, a series, series. right? With the, how many? Those, there's two other more three, three? right? So At there's least. yeah, there's the after this uh, went direct to video with the Crow Salvation, mm-hmm. which had um, Kirsten Dunst is in this. Isn't Kirsten she? Dunst was in it, yeah. but the Crow guy was. Um, Eric Mobius or whatever he was <laughs> in the Resident Evil movie. If you remember the original Resident Evil, oh, you're Evil the only movie. one who remembers. Yeah, okay. Uh, the it, yeah. fourth one uh, was called The Crow Wicked Prayer, and it had Edward Furlong as no. the crow, Oof, no. and oh, David no. Boreanaz was the head of the gang. No. That killed what? him. All I right. I want to watch that one. I want to say Tara Reed might be in that. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. But somebody- okay. I can't watch any more Edward Furlong movies, guys. No, I don't have it I in I can't. Me. I can't. And then there's a TV series starring Mark DeCoscos. Um, okay. He would probably be, what would you know him from? Probably John Wick 4. Was he in John Wick? He was the primary bad guy in John Wick 4. He was bald. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, he was uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf. He was oh, in. Gotcha. And- Crying Freeman, and he was um, Eric Draven in The Crow, Stairway to Heaven, which was a TV series. Oh, so, basically, so, the... There he is on the cover of TV Guide. Look at that. He yeah, looks uh, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks, so like, he looks, looks like, like Chris Angel. He does. <laughs> like he's gonna do he does. Cr- Chris what Angel lifted his entire personality from this series of movies, Maybe from right? this movie. Because this, this movie guy's is a Because this guy's a magician. magician. I hate this. Get the fucking magic out of this movie. <laughs> I'm not taking you seriously if you're doing, like, up-close magic at yeah. me. You know? So That's why I was asking about how he was in the first movie. Because in this movie, it's like, he's like the fucking Joker. Yeah, like, I don't weird. like it's, it's weird. Yeah. It's a weird he, he, choice. He's a jester. They do that, in, but some of his lines are 
lines from the comic that weren't used in the first movie. Okay. okay. Um, so the the Eric Draven did fuck with the guys that he was coming after. Mm-hmm. And would, you yeah. Because you, you had the idea that, you know, he was this goth guy who had read like Voltaire and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And he was spouting all these lines about, you know, they were uh, profound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ash, Ash he, Corvin is his name. Ugh, and Eric Draven ew. and Ash Corvin. Ew. God. What were the names of the other ones? I'm. I wonder. Uh, yeah. Good question. I'm look it I up. haven't you actually watched the other the other movies. I think. No, I did see the third one. I tapped out after. This. That's when you tapped out. No, I saw the series too. <laughs> oh, oh, say, you kept going after. Those? I'm gonna see this new movie. Yeah, just you to, are. To yeah. proclaim how bad it is, unfortunately, which is not a good reason to see a movie. But I'm gonna see it too. Um. Okay, so uh, the Crow City of Angels. Uh, we retain a lot of the original production crew from the first one. Uh, now we're relocating to Los Angeles, and uh, yeah, I guess what's the story? You know, because you can't copy the original movie, right? Their concept here is that well, if a crow brought Eric Draven back to life to avenge his death, then a crow can bring anybody back mm-hmm. to life and you could do a hundred of these. <laughs> yep. He can set yep. them in different time periods like the predator. We can have I would respect that Victorian more. Victorian crow. Yeah. And, All right, yeah, give me a gimmick. Yeah, I would like that. Gimmick crow would be a Victorian era crow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Give me a give me someone who got murdered by Jack the Ripper. I was getting, just going to say that. Reanimated yes. by a crow to there come back know. and What was there was a them. movie? That, that'd be a female crow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I've seen this movie. Uh, they did it. It was uh, uh like a was she a Cherokee? She was an Indian woman i think that was killed and came back and she had like the war paint this is only like three or four years ago oh, wow. and now oh, cool. i can't remember the title of it but it's like this is the crow mm-hmm. right I was like, that <laughs> sounds way cooler yeah. the bird name <clears throat> i don't remember ah, sure. you'd have to google it it's just like mm-hmm. modern day crow woman movie or whatever <laughs> i'm sure it you sounds cool like those words yeah. exactly yeah um so yeah, who who is our crow this time around? I guess they, the crow is the, the 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 totem that brings him that right. bridges the land of the dead to, and brings the soul back. Right. So who which, is he which is why? that that is modern or not modern? That is like ancient lore in a lot of different cultures that the crow can like kind of ferry people between the life and afterlife. I know that like when I went when I went to Alaska, that was like a big legend among the natives there. It was that the crows can be an omen for death and for life. And it's like a whole thing. So I, I respect that they're going with that mythology because there is truth to that. Yeah. But but in this movie, it's like instead of it being a girlfriend, it's just his kid. It's like <laughs> it's not the the upgrade they think it is to the stakes of the movie. No, you no, know, it feels very su- uh, uh, just superficial. Well, mm-hmm. what could you do? I mean, I know the, 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 the girlfriend or the fiance, you mm-hmm. know, taking it, the, the love story. Just that's gender a- flip it. That would have been more interesting. Well, yeah, they have they bring back Sarah, the little girl who's a friend say, of the Dravens. We about her because she's kind of the star. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. Mia Kirshner. Mm-hmm. Who we would all know from. Not another teen movie. <laughs> That's what I got her from. Uh, also from 24, apparently. From 24. Which Colin uh, loves. Uh, she has a... Well, I saw her originally in a movie called Exotica, which I thought yeah, was really been, yeah. good. Like, way back in the I mean, in the day. Adam McGoyan movie. But... Um, a few things. She was... She has a... I don't know if it's because of this or whatever, but she has, like... You know, there's a couple actresses, actors, actresses, that you're like, if they make a goth movie, right, you, know, mm-hmm. you should be in it. She has that look mm-hmm. and so they cast her in the 30 days of night sequel if you ever oh, saw dark, boy, days, dark days she's the uh, bad guy vampire in there. Uh, interesting. That okay. i won't be watching that because we rewatched that it's good no original. It's not even like you watched <laughs> yeah but we rewatched the original not too long ago and that was bad so i can't imagine yeah, and people not. people praise that movie people say it's good but yeah enough to get a sequel out yeah of it. yeah I um, the video i believe but still he writes the sequel mm-hmm. So Sarah from the original movie returns now grown up, moved to Los Angeles from Detroit where the Mm -hmm. original movie takes place. Mm -hmm. She's a tattoo artist, right? And um, according to McKellen, not a very good one. No, she's not. You're not supposed to see the streaks like that. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to look like dried up marker. Yeah, it was (laughs) supposed to be solid. It was bad. And she has, I think because of her prior experience with Eric Draven mm-hmm. has a psychic connection 
to the latest person who's coming back from the dead. Sure. She dreams about him. Mm-hmm. Where does this go in the plot? She's just a damsel in distress, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially in the third act. Just kind of floating through life. Yeah, I don't know. She what brings the... she kind of is the vehicle to get him back into the story, I guess. Mm-hmm. So that's why she has that's why we're saying she has a psychic link. Right. Because it's forgotten, it feels like to me, right after oh, yeah. we establish it. It just basically she sees a crow in her apartment one night and follows. She's like, Oh, I know she what this means. She says she has dreams. She's, She's not even that animated of... about it, Colin. She goes, I know. She does. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Who's responsible for writing that uh, pearl of uh, of uh, gleaming dialogue? David S. Goyer. I know the not his best work. Man. No, but <laughs> far I, but from also, it. I think this was torn apart and cut up and edited and yeah. bullshit. So I, 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 I will I, not I, hold it against him. Yeah, uh, he's not. I, I doubt he'll, he's the problem. Or he's him, not him, to he blame may her. be. But yeah, I wouldn't yeah. blame him for this one. <laughs> I'm going to hold it against him. I That's mean, fine. They're saying his lines. They, they oh. have, he's the, the only person credited on the script. So even if they're rewriting it. He's still getting them. I mean, some of these lines are off. I mean, they are really telling bad. you exactly what they're going to exactly. do. I, I think uh, uh, Ash, when he comes back, is like, so I'm going to go and kill them all in order leading up to Judah. Yes, I will start at the bottom of the food <laughs> yeah. chain and work, work my way up. <laughs> way up. It's like, how do you know the food chain? You just got here. <laughs> he just got here. You just got here. Judah. She brings him back. He freaks out forever. And then uh, two seconds later, he is a, a cold hearted avenging killer. Yeah, avenged is the movie, by the way. I think avenged uh, is the one. Yeah, yeah. But so, so yeah, then he just goes nuts, like real nuts, like let's get nuts, Batman nuts. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't work. Well, who is our? Who is the 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 guy who's who the crow in this movie? Who's? What do you mean? Like, what's the character? How does he end up in that predicament? Oh, he's just a mechanic. Who, yeah. In a bad part of town, whose kid? Whose kid's an idiot? Whose kid's an idiot? Mm-hmm. Here's, he's painting a picture. Here's some gunshots, and he's like, "Oh!" Which literally is what happens. Yeah, what and he runs. Yeah, and he runs out to the alley to see what the gunshots were. There's a gang killing somebody. Yeah, and the gang sees the child and the father and kills them for watching. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's the, which like. <laughs> That's the crow. It always has to be, <laughs> and that's it. Always has to be a witness to like it is the same beats. Witnessing a crime, and because you witness this crime, now you're marked for death. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, get a different just, story. Like, well, I like, guess the, the idea that it, the loss has to be so but, emotionally damaging but here's, that you would it's back. worth you know. Here's my thing though. Back. Here's my thing though. I understand if he's alive and he wants revenge, but they bring him back. To get revenge, right? Like he becomes the crow. He's dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was with his son. He was dead. Yeah. Yep. You're bringing him back. So you're separating them again. Yep. Like, yep. I don't understand the point of this. Because he's got to kill the other people. Being that but he yeah, once you complete the mission, you will be reunited with your son in the afterlife. Does, but, so does so he, where was he in the meantime? Yeah, you're saying so where he, was they he? weren't reunited they, yeah, already. They were already together because <laughs> yeah. they were both dead. Do you like, get brought back against your will? Or is that like. Just because you 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 feel this this need for revenge is like in the is is a thing that pulls him back out whether he wants to or not or where any where any but you're dead how do you have a need for anything well that's what I'm saying that's what I'm asking I'm like what what is right it doesn't make sense well the dialogue all it says is something to the effect of sometimes. When a, something so horrible happens, a crow can bring someone back to set the wrong things right. That's right, that's right, the mythology. That, that love line again. That's in this movie. I did, did yeah. No, I actually I, my ears. I did the line from the original because that's the only one I can remember. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it, it was rewritten or retooled. And sometimes in this. love is stronger than. But death. that's basically but that doesn't it. Make so sense. it's like it doesn't fucking make sense. Were they were they were they in heaven or hell? We don't know. They're just they're no. uh, you know the the they're like dead. can you can you imagine like getting back. like you you die tragically right and you get brought back and they're just like. You're on a mission now to avenge, and I'd be like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" whoa. Like, no, I don't. Like, no. it sucks, but I don't want to do that. In like, both movies, they don't. They don't come back with an instruction sheet. No. They right. just wake up. Yeah, and I guess Eric Draven kind of, you know, is like, I, you know, I remember he gets the flood of memories, and he's right. like, "I'm going to kill these people." Okay, but I think in this I, one. I think. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll and then I'll jump in. Go ahead. Well, in this mm-hmm. one, they 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 change it. Like mm-hmm. he has to because Sarah's there. She can tell him you're, you're, you're here on a mission, which is uh, to, well, oh, to yeah, kill so him. much better when you're just talking <laughs> through it the whole right. time instead of he's showing it. And then uh, and he gets brought back and then we see what 
what happens to him? The way it's it's edited together, yeah. like, it should have been the cold open. It really yes, hit us with like, the punch. If you want yeah, us to care exactly. About, well, okay. and, and any amount for this character, we have to know what, what happened. happened yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the well, reason why that may be a a, a Weinstein I think re edit. It, it feels like th- those flashbacks weren't supposed to be flashbacks. I think that's probably it. Should have been the cold open. It should have been like been like Batman. Yeah. Yeah, we should have seen those pearls flying at us. You know, <laughs> yeah, he, he gets killed, and yeah. then you know, and then yeah. we meet her, and you know, and I, why you even have to include her in the movie? I don't know because, again, if you're bringing the character back from the previous movie, then you go like, okay, so she's the next crow, then, right? Somehow it's her story about, Something. but no. She basically becomes a damsel in distress. Yeah, but I yeah. I know why Holly, Sean, and I are not connecting with this setup. We've seen this movie done better in a movie we love called Ghost. There it is. <laughs> he gets killed tragically. Oh, that's the best. And girl. <laughs> and he has to come back from the dead to avenge what happened to yeah, him. He can't leave until the mission it's is done. Yep. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. a better version She's of like, the same I have story. To save the woman I love. Yes. I have to do this, and then yeah. I can move on. And that, that makes was, sense. And that was even more tragic because it was his friend that set him up. Yeah. yeah. God, so that's, that's the, such a good movie. Like uh, <laughs> the feel good one, but then there's another yes. subset of people who kind of like the dark. Oh yeah, like, this is the goth version of Ghost. Fuck out of these people. And that's the crow. It's still not as competent, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this version, I think, you know, you were saying it's like mm-hmm. they're they're making, uh, you know, they're changing the stakes by making it a father and son because you're like, okay, if we can't do, you know, the unrequited love story again, because mm-hmm. that'd be a director at Buff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Even though the sequels, that's what they do. It, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's because they saw like this said, and they're just like, we're going to go back to that. Like I said, I just gender a, flip it and it would have been. Yeah, why, you could do it. She, why yeah. can't Sarah's boyfriend yep. tragically die and then she could've becomes done. the next crow? That seems obvious. That seems that, obvious. Yeah. yeah. It seems like yeah, the. With, yeah. Because this with way. The, with her eyes, like, and, and yeah. the makeup on her. And yeah. Well, she would have looked cool in the makeup. She would have looked real cool. Or even her her friendly slash pervy boss have him get murdered and she avenges him even sweet old man you know well i don't think that having a father son while that's tragic Mm -hmm. i don't think to the teen audience who watches these movies that resonates the way that uh, they can get a, a love story right especially if you make the kid an idiot yeah. <laughs> I don't care if that yeah. Kid died. Yeah. He's an idiot. Right. He deserves to get what he got. I, I felt more for for Eric Roberts' son in Best of the Best. Right? What happens to Eric Roberts' son in Best of the Best? <laughs> he gets hit on his bike. Yeah. Does he die? No. No, he no he's fine. In a coma. Yeah. He and then shows his broken up at the, leg. At yeah, but he's fine. Tournament yeah. at the end. Yeah. yeah. Oh to oh. cheer his dad up. Oh, I was going to say, stolen the coma? Because that would have <laughs> been better. <laughs> like the first, they wheel him in. But, <laughs> like the first time we see him, he's riding a trike near a busy street, and we're like, oh, God, he's going to get pet cemetery. Like we just knew it was coming, and then yeah. he did. So his dad starts losing, and he goes, beep. <laughs> yeah. like, no, I have to fight for my son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not far off, you know? <laughs> yeah, honestly. It's, and it's there, not. there was just flashbacks of ice cream cones getting dropped. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's how they. You knew something tragic I mean, was about to good, happen. Uh, yeah. Good, Apparently, uh, yeah, yeah. It was a, good a good talker movie. <laughs> it was a good time. Um, so okay, they're gonna cast uh, Vincent Perez because he because has a look that's similar to, I guess, what mm. a you know you go. With, okay, this they is cast what, him because of his eyes. What a crow! Yeah. What the the crow? What, what Brandon Lee looked like? Yeah, you know, a look alone is what they cast this on. But if it's not the same character, why does it need to look the same? I agree. But that's it's, what they. I mean, you don't have that, a blonde are, crow, right? Well, well, yeah. you are, the new guy. He's, but you are you are establishing a um a, 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 or what they did with the first one a, a look yeah like they right. want to continue he can that still on. have the same wardrobe but he doesn't need to look like Brandon Lee is what why, I'm saying because he's not playing Eric Draven why does he have the Alice Cooper makeup I don't know poorly because, done yeah poorly because done. she remembers it from the first one because she was yeah she does his makeup she does his makeup I, she should have texted but it's Sarah a little bit face. different. Yeah, like, so different she tattoo it. again we got like a really weird yeah because like she's a, copy, a tattoo a artist she, she should have just tattooed it you're right yeah, she yeah. should have just tattooed yeah. that would have been the fucking mm-hmm. badass version of this yeah that's what's gonna happen in the remake probably. I guarantee it because he's got all those shitty tattoos probably. on him yeah well, probably he's got, like the remake has you know I don't know it looks like you know grease all running down I don't yeah, know they gotta come up with a reason for that but it's I know you have to have because that was part of the I guess original kind of like Harlequin look of the comic mm-hmm. yeah. Crow where he had like a spiky hair and Brandon Lee went with the long hair so the movie version gives you a guy with the longer hair um they uh, so he has that um it's the tragedy mask mm-hmm. yeah. uh makeup mm-hmm. um 
And then they kind of put him in like a priest robe or something in this one. So he kind of has that look to him. He's got a, a flowing robe? cape. It's a duster. It's a duster. Yeah. Long leather duster. It's a leather yeah. duster. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I know that it's a jacket, but when he's walking around, he looks like he's a... Uh, to me, it. he looks like a priest. I and get that what you're saying. Tie in with like that yeah. goth thing. Yeah. Feels like, I get what you're saying. A but priest it is in a, a belly shirt. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a crop top on, yeah. which... Weirdly enough, not the biggest problem with this movie, though. No. I, I kind of have to look past it because there's so many other things wrong yeah. that I just have to let right. that one go. Yeah, know? it's funny that that's the least of our problems. Yeah, exactly. The crop top makes him look less like a badass. Yeah, it, more like a clown. Yeah. But, well, he's I mean, very clownish in it, this movie. Already yeah. he's got the flippy hair, which... Let's yeah, talk Rachel, about the hair. Yeah, what does yeah. it look like? There, Holly? Oh, he has the same hairstyle as Rachel Lee Cook and Josie and the Pussycats. Yep. Which wasn't that right around the same time? It's like pretty 97? close. Pretty close. Right? Yeah. Is it that old? I think so. I think so. I think so. Yeah, she does. And it bounces same when hair. he walks the same way. And I just couldn't not fucking see it after you mentioned it. You're welcome. So another <laughs> ding against this movie. <laughs> well, oh, um, 2001 was Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, wow. That okay. was later than I thought. Okay. So the gang in this movie, then we talk about uh, who are they? What are they up to? What's the power structure? Right. Well, that's a good question. I, We're gonna have to really, ask somebody else for that one. Yeah, it's a really good question. There's a guy named Judah that has like a sex dungeon office. We need to talk about Judah because I don't. He's a drug understand. dealer that has a sex dungeon. I don't understand. Yeah, we are leaves. in we are I, in the dystopian LA of the now future. It's Maybe like it's Escape from LA. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. it kind of feels like it. It feels like a post-apocalyptic LA. It does. Well, the production design is like... Uh, Which is not what was happening in just, Detroit in the first one. It was just quote-unquote normal Detroit. Yeah, but it was still it had that kind well, of grungy look. It did. It look. was, it was elevated. Well, because it was Detroit. Yeah, industrial. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. this one, I mean, it's like there's broken glass all over everywhere. All dust the, covering the, everything. Everything's all Although bombed out. LA. There's smoke. There's a big... Uh, uh, every shot has smog. tons of smog. Is that what it's supposed yeah, it's to be? It's all the smog. Because uh, it's L.A. And it's, it's L.A. There's I thought smog. it was like fog no, or it's something. It's L.A. in the 90s. It's smog. It's, yeah. it, but it's mm-hmm. colored, you know, so they're getting these That's primary LA in the 90s. colors. Of, smog. It's colored. You know, it's all yellow with pink smoke in the background. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or So, mm-hmm. I mean, like, the cinematography, you said you hated everything. The cinematography. Yep. I, yeah, I mean, stand by what I said. Okay. It's there. I, it, it's there. I mean, this, this it's is got a okay, style. Okay. I, I like think that's the, the best I thing like about the, the movie. I like the model work. Yeah. I'll Good. give you that. I'm going to I'm not going to fault the cinematographer no, you know in what? this movie. Love the crow work. Yeah, the <laughs> crow, crow work. work. The crow, the crow acting. Doing the crow feedy. The crow feedy artist. There's in a crow the feedy artist. <laughs> crow feedy. I love. This is my favorite thing in the world. Love it. Crow feedy artist. Okay, so Judah is like the kingpin of LA. Because he okay. sells drugs. Yeah, no, we need to talk about this guy because I'm very, very fucking confused about this guy. I get okay. that he's like the drug lord of L.A., right? Yeah. Like he's like got his signature like little packets, like sugar packets mm-hmm. of drugs with <laughs> yeah. his little logo on him, which I yeah. love that he has a logo. Mm-hmm. That's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, Branding. Oh, it's all, all about branding. All about branding. Yeah. So great. Great marketing. Um, but he's like... I'm trying to figure out a way to because he has like a seer, like his like he's his, like an Egyptian god. He's like Xerxes, they, right? Yeah, he's like yeah, Xerxes basically. from three hundred. Yeah. Okay, why? Like what? What is he? Is he? Is he a spirit? Is he a, like a demon? Is because I feel like he's not human, but it, they it, never yeah, say it, what he is. Okay, I do have like an answer to this. Do oh. you please? Yes, because, because he has a seer, and they like have this globe <sighs> thing where they like watch L.A. and it's, it's yeah, just, from a camera yeah. like, system that's yeah. like, like yeah. Why is he like a god? It's, I don't system. understand. I don't know where you got that from because there's nothing in this movie that says I know because it system. looks like it's some kind of like, no, uh, like mystical a oracle kind of like yeah. portal in the it, in the yeah. in it's the sink. It's like the devil's CCTV. It's yeah, so weird. Uh, from his sex dungeon apartment, yeah, right. which you're like, did they find this or they had to build it? They, you have to build that. Yeah. You don't find a building that looks like that. That's Harvey Weinstein's apartment. Yeah, yeah. seriously. That's Probably. Good, yeah. Point, so they actually. often have girls or some kind of, there's a lot of bondage. Yeah. Uh, there's, bondage. There's, there's, always some, there's always someone chained up somewhere. Yeah. 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 Dripping, I wonder if they ever clock uh, out and just like, I need a smoke break. Yeah. Just yeah. go outside. And they're, they're, you got pierced nipples and they're yeah. dripping, you know, mm-hmm. a candle wax like on naked people. Like you have to take breaks. There's like, chafing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You got, I, um, yeah. In the original version of this movie, okay. which uh, the ending was also uh, altered. And I think the structure of the movie, because basically the, the Weinstein said we want it to be basically like The Crow. That movie was a hit. We want it to be more like that. Um, there was a scene... I don't think this exists in anything except uh, the the comic book adaptation and the script. Uh, Judah had a previous experience 
where he died for several minutes and went to hell. And being a masochist, right, enjoyed it. And Mm -hmm. so he comes back. And so when we meet him, now, if you know that, when you're watching this, the whole thing, like when we first meet him and his seer, they're waiting for death to come because this is the moment he's been waiting for as he tortures all these people. You know, that's his thing is he just he likes watching uh, people die. That seems yeah. like important context. Yeah. And it's missing from the yes. movie. Yeah. Because then his line about later, I've been, you know, go to hell. I've been there. I Makes liked it. Yeah. Zero fucking sense in the movie we watched. Yeah. yeah. Because one scene is missing. Did anybody watch this movie before releasing it in theaters? I don't think so. But that's just like, get it out there. We'll have one good weekend where people don't know mm-hmm. what this movie is. And that's the Weinsteins. Yep. All right. <laughs> it is. They're like, because I think they basically thought all their audience was for horror was mm-hmm. rubes. Uh, uh, when you watch Miramax movies, it's like well, people like this Halloween stuff. I don't know why, but mm-hmm. we'll just give them something with the name mm-hmm. Halloween on it. And that explain that mentality explains your frustration yeah. with the years that they had that franchise. Uh, um, and the Hellraiser franchise it explains that too. I mean, well, and they fucked up Scream Three as well. So you know. yeah. Um, so Judah is waiting for the crow to appear Mm -hmm. um that's why the seer basically like right away is like the the dead man's coming for you where's the Mm -hmm. death where's the face of a a prior victim and he's like but i want to seize its power how do you kill a a man that's already dead like they know this way too early on yeah Yeah. it feels like they are set up and ready for it yeah and that only works if you have this backstory on Mm -hmm. that character Mm -hmm. which isn't there jesus um so Judah was part of the, you know, he ordered basically the execution of uh, Ash and his son. Mm-hmm. And so he's going to be at the top of the pyramid. And the movie then is we have to go and kill all these guys in order to get to him. Mm-hmm. Yes. But then somewhere in there, we have to inject this like a love story with Sarah. Like cut? an almost love story. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. all that got, that's what got cut that's out. Got, it got yeah. cut out. All got cut. Yeah. So there was. She disappears for like two, uh, an act and a half of this movie. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Sean, was... when you said I forgot about her, I did too. I was like, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Because I, I thought she was dead because she mm-hmm. answers the door and they immediately start firing guns right. through the door as we're looking through the keyhole. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, she's dead, right? Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if they just killed her and moved on. Right. Well, because then, then it's revealed that she's been kidnapped. Yeah. Yeah. And I forgot about. Then we have another scene where he goes after Iggy Pop instead yeah. of going directly after her. So the editing is like mm-hmm. s- scenes are swapped yeah, mm-hmm. and it makes you forget that like, oh, what what's he doing? And there was yeah. a lot of times I was like, why is he coming back to her house? He's trying to kill all these guys, but he comes back to her house for like timeouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seriously. He needs breaks. It's a video game. You got to yeah. go, uh, you know, rest Re- up, yeah. save your game. Yeah. Regenerate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, cash in a few items, get some new guns. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. He, could- I wish he had a cool, like, something weapon gearing up scene or like getting yeah. a cool weapon or like something. where's his something. like cue you know that gives yeah. him all his there's yeah weapon. all we all we get is when he like becomes the crow when which is like it's like not not yeah, good which not is good. A, which is uh, just, what he's talking just about? a shot uh, of hands it's just him. Oh, why is he clenching his hands so, so much? So much hand work yeah. oh, in man, this but, yeah, transformation but the director scene. of photography in those scenes is like, look at it. Oh, this is great. Yeah, he puts his hand down. He flexes it when it comes out I'm of gonna, the sleeve. I'm going yeah. with something with you. The, <laughs> the, the, the photography is not good in this movie. Oh, hit me. It is not shot well. Okay. Because the things it's... Uh, um, uh, or or the, the choreography of the fight scenes is not well because there's... Um, mostly this comes out in the fight scene with the woman. Okay. Uh, um, oh, it's oh, she's she's the yellow Power Ranger. Okay. Okay, I'm just throwing that in there. Okay. But okay, in the choreography, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, oh, you threw me off. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, that that feels very Power Ranger ish. That whole fight scene. But yeah, it does. Like in in stuff that you should be showing the actions they're doing, it just focuses like it's an upshot on him and a shot on her, and you don't see the the movement, the action, the choreography. Mm-hmm. I guess you just see their faces and everything. Uh, he's slamming his head and breaking tables uh, in that scene as well. They barely show it. Like it's it, they shoot them too close. They don't get wide on any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. It doesn't actually. Yeah, there's a lot of close up faces close and up. eyes and all that stuff. Yeah. Are, like very close all the and time. It doesn't mm-hmm. work. All right, like, you're making we, me rethink my should... position. I was originally <laughs> like I was blaming that on direction. But maybe so I was looking at like the lighting cameraman. Okay. 
choreographer, you know, a cinematographer. Sure, sure, sure. But yeah, I guess That's the staging of thing. scenes. Yes. If the choreographer, the cinematographer is involved in that, then they're failing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. we can't Somebody, follow the action. The no. editor is like, I don't have the shot, man. Or it's him. I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing the editor did not have the coverage. He couldn't have because it's not a, it's a, it's not good. It's not well constructed fight scene. And um, the other ones aren't too terrible. But there's this is the only like actual like fight fight scene kind of. Yeah. Even the later one between him and um, Iggy Pop. Well, even no, uh, what's his name? Judah. Oh, Judah. Yeah, between him and Judah at the end is just not. Oh, doesn't look very well, and the choreography is not good. Staging. Okay, so mm. I agree with that. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm glad it was that easy to convince you. Richard Brooker plays uh, Richard. Richard Brooker is, a is Jason. Jason, right? Yeah. Richard Brooks is uh, Judah. Yes, and uh, we are putting him on the center. Oh, oh. Show. oh. Okay. so wow. MF Mad, the keeper. I'm sorry, the- we watched more of him yes. in other movies. Yes, and he uh, didn't stick, huh? When yeah. when I say one of them, you'll instantly go like, "Oh yeah, I think I remember him in Shocker." No, <sighs> no. Okay, I didn't I was, like that I, movie. I don't though. Peter I Berg's Shocker. football friend in Shocker. I don't think I was here for that. Okay, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> it was he was not good. And he was in the Hidden. The was Hidden he was he? he? Okay, he like his the... name was Sanchez. I don't actually remember. All right, all right. Uh, there's him. another guy who's on the Hallway of Fame. His name is Shelley Desai, and he was in Phantom of the Paradise, Escape from L.A., and he was a Hindu in The Crow, City of Angels. I don't uh, recall him in it, but mm-hmm. MF Mad provided photos, yeah, the and real, I'm like, oh, I recognize The real that star guy. of this is MF Mad. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the keeper so thank of you Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, for even... Uh, <laughs> If you watch this, God bless you. My God. So the, I hope motley, didn't. the motley crew of gangsters uh, consists of uh, pre-stardom Thomas Jane. I was going to say, we have to talk about Thomas Jane, yep. too, in a very weird scene. Oh, is that him jerking off in the thing? Yep. I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't either. I saw his name and I'm like, oh, Thomas Jane. And, and then, then it for- immediately yep. gone and yep. whoever that guy is. Did not recognize him as Thomas Jane. I it think is, it's the wig. It is Thomas Jane. Holy yeah. shit. The longest, I'm most uncomfortable scene it's I've seen in a long time. This? Why is this? Yeah, why is this? Why yeah. is this? In this, this, is, movie? this is why, the why Weinstein. Is this? They like this, right? Yes. No, I think that's what I was going to say. They uh, like but this. I, I'm going to go with that's Goyer. Um, because <laughs> the, the milieu of the entire movie is to try and do this like s and m sex you know there's a there's like an s and m sex party yeah. later on, so this kind of fits into it. Mm-hmm. They're trying to find i guess like uh they're making the gang members all degenerates they're like uh Murder drug fueled enough. murder. Yeah. You know why do we need to put a hat on a hat though? Yeah, yeah. like yeah. like we already know they yeah, murdered is, kids yeah, in cold why, blood. Especially why a jerking yeah. off hat? Yeah, but isn't that like they're just trying to make? Why them, is this hat pleasuring itself so hard? It makes the it makes them gross. Yeah, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it does. Oh, this it's is going a hardcore movie. gross. This okay, very and that just shows movie. weakness in your in your uh, hero, quote unquote, motivation. You got to be extreme. If you got to yeah. do this much to your bad guys yeah. to make them want to be killed, then your motivation for killing the kid and him yep. in the beginning is exactly. Not strong. Yep. Uh, this movie makes Maxine look tasteful and classy, doesn't <laughs> it? Because really does. like the, yeah. we get a similar type scene in Maxine that I mean goes differently than this one. Maxine is tasteful, but and classy. it is. <laughs> but yeah, it is tasteful. I'm saying com- this movie really elevates Maxine. Holy Holy shit, especially yeah. like the way her her like token booth like live dance girl scene goes is yeah. way classier and than and this. much more effective just because yeah. you hear the squeezing of the leather gloves yes. and everything. you're like okay yeah. this guy has issues yeah. and problems yeah. uh, he, and that's all he needed to do yeah he, didn't well, he need ripped to the wood off, off the minutes. wall but yeah the way and classier sweat. I think it's the sweat that the, the way me. classier it's, just, it's show everything booth. about it it's and the angle wig. <laughs> it's the fucking angle you're so tight on his face too his face is like tilted up yeah and you hear that you hear the slapping and then the coat I forgot about the coat oh, oh yeah the, the flapping around coat. he's trying to get the what coin the and he's like just that's a performance that's thing a right performance. they just let it go okay, yeah i take it back that's the one thing i liked about this movie is it's like he was being attacked by his own coat yeah it was yeah it's yeah, just like yeah. what's happening well everybody because he's looking for his token it's in his pocket he can't get it fast right. enough yeah. you know, he can't really move through leather real quick yeah, yeah. Stuck in well his other yes. hand is busy <laughs> yeah and, uh, and Michaela pointed out while we were watching the movie, like everybody's so like aggro he's in so this movie, like all performances, 100% all the time. Well, except maybe Mayor Kirshner. Yeah, yeah. which and, which uh, brings, is negative one hundred percent. Which brings us to my favorite part of the night when Sean yelled at the screen, "Change your face!" <laughs> <laughs> Every time we cut back to her. 
same just, open mouth, open mouth, <laughs> weird like, stare. Oh, yeah. yeah, I wonder. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. does anything affect you? Change your face. They, face. I think <laughs> they are just uh, looking at her like she's beautiful and she's goth, and you just want a statue. You yeah, know, yeah, uh, they, yeah. they're just looking at images like mm-hmm. static images and that, you know, the create of the filmmakers. I mean, yes, no, and I it's, agree. this is not like good for drama where no. you have to kind of emote and use your face. And I think that is a problem is because the, the way they set up this movie or, the, or it's look to it, these things would look good as just stills. Yes. Moving. They end up mm-hmm. looking horrible or or there's a uh, just a disconnect. There's not it doesn't flow well. It well, looks you get a music video director that. and mm-hmm. he's sitting there. All, it's all about like, you know, catching those shots. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. um, yeah. Who? Uh, so he, he kills the guy in the peep show booth. Uh, yeah. I, and, do, I do. I do. Uh, the one thing where the, the screen goes down, he's got to fight for the quarter and it comes back up and, and uh, Corvin's there. I yeah. liked it. I liked it. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. That's, I'm like, okay, I, I like it. it. Yeah. We could have got there quicker. Yeah. And he but I like his oh my God. Yeah. He, he, well, Sean, he could not get there he quicker. He could not get there quicker. <laughs> <laughs> he was That's true. Big That's problem. true. Um, there was also the guy with like the um, the the hair at the beginning. What was it? Spider Monkey. That's yeah. his name, but that does Spider not Monkey. make me recall a character. Uh, he was he in blew a, up in a room full of barrels. Oh, yeah. he was oh, manufacturing yeah. the the drug. Yeah, yeah. And he was the one that uh, Ash is able to he get was all the, first the names. One. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. The, this is the Batman scene. This yeah, is Batman. Um, so he blows Wait, him so up. Did Batman begins rip this off for the con- uh, shipping container scene, and Batman begins like, is that? That's I mean, that's Goyer, like, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. Fuck! I just you're right. God damn it! Fuck! Yeah. He did it again. He just reused his own ideas in a better movie. He yeah. did. Damn yeah. you, Goyer. It is. Yeah. It's a damn you, Goyer. Because <laughs> I was waiting for it. Because like, this yeah. is a, I'm Batman. This, yeah. this, that is that yeah. moment. I forget. Yeah. Did, did Do you Goyer... think he wanted us to see the, the, the pearls flying? And then they were like, dude, we cannot just straight up do Batman. Like, <laughs> This is like one day I yeah. will do it. Yep. Oh, I was looking to see if Goyer did the first one. He did not. It was David J. Sh- uh, Scow, who was a, uh, a splatterpunk oh. uh, author, oh, cool. uh, co-wrote the script for the first one. Interesting. Um, so he kills the t- those two guys, and then he kills the Power Ranger after they kidnap <laughs> uh, Sarah, right? And he has like a martial arts duel Wait, was with she her. actually a Power Ranger? Yeah, she, like she was like she was the yellow, yellow ranger. She was the yellow ranger. Yeah. Well, yeah. They weren't in the costume ever. They were in the American. They show, were eating right? hot dogs Trini. and walking around the mall. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I just wow. I hey, I've never seen Colin. Her in they took helmets offense. off sometimes. They, 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 <laughs> so right. they at least got the motion of taking the helmet off and holding it. You know. <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny true. you say that because I was I was adding to my freak show list today and I put the. 2017 Power Rangers movie on there because I'm like, remember when that came and went? Yep. Wow, yeah. <laughs> like uh, uh, it just fizzled out so quickly. Better than it, it uh, had any. But it has that weird any revenge right porn. Any right to be. But, but it has that weird right revenge porn subplot out of nowhere. Does yeah, yeah, there's like because they're in high school and she's passing. Yeah, you know, we'll bring okay, it. We'll yeah, bring well, it. Yeah, we'll talk well, about right. it. We'll I didn't, this I didn't see it. So. This is a sidebar, but is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the only pop culture uh, nostalgia bomb for '90s kids that you can adapt in a movie? Because we got '80s kids got Transformers, yeah. GI Joe, and Power all Rangers has never been able to make it work in like a mainstream movie. Like they held, had like tons of direct to video movies, sorry, but yeah. like What's the they, Ivan Ooze movie. Yes. <laughs> was it that X Men uh, Apocalypse? Was the Ivan Ooze uh, movie? That is the other yeah, Ivan Ooze yeah, movie. Yeah. You are correct. Yeah. But, but like I was looking, I was scrolling through it, and the star power in that movie that flatlined entirely. Brian yes. Cranston is Zordon and, in that movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Banks is yeah. And uh, Decker great. Montgomery from Stranger Things is the he's Red Ranger. Yeah. Like, and I was like, that, this movie, I'm fascinated Becky by G it. Is the Yellow Ranger. Yeah. 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 I'm fascinated by how it failed so mm-hmm. spectacularly. Well, we may talk about yeah. that on a future episode yes. of the show. To. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't see it. Yeah. Oh it's shit! Something. Am I bringing Power Rangers yeah. 2017? I think I might be. Yeah. Okay. Um. So he uh, he kills her, uh, the Power Ranger, in a martial arts fight, which made me go like, when you become when you're reanimated, do you just get uh, jujitsu powers? Yeah. And is it a tad racist that she is the only one doing karate moves? Probably. Yeah. Well, it turns yeah. out that uh, she, and she has made throwing that, stars. She yeah. made that request. She's a ninja. Okay. Oh, oh. it was her idea. Okay. It was her idea All because right, that, she's like, good. I can actually do okay. this stuff. I was All on right. the Power Ranger. Oh, hell yeah. Good for her. 
so I true. guess okay. the scene was not written that way. And she's like, I can yeah. f- actually yeah. fight. So oh. they had to come up with. Well, then props. To oh, her. so then. Yeah. The, oh, right. So she came up with it, and then they fucked it up. And they were like, yeah. okay, well now this guy's got to try and learn martial arts. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. That explains a lot more <laughs> as to why it was shot the way that it was. That really does make a lot of that sense. That makes more sense. And she probably had to like slow it down for him probably. and like hold back. Yep. Oh, no wonder why it looked the way it yeah. did. Yeah. So, I mean, good for her for trying. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But that scene was altered also because I guess uh, in the original version, he throws her out the window after he's broken her back or whatever. Oh, yeah. And uh, she survives. And she's <laughs> like, okay, kill me quick. And he's like, you know, I'm not going to. No. Oh, and he no. walks away. And Bro, her, did you see her, her hit the slow. car? Yeah. She's not living through that. <laughs> yeah. that, was Although, a, that was a good thump. Yeah. That was a, uh, that that was a that really good was hurt. That yeah. sounded like it hurt. That hurt. <laughs> but with, with every death, what do we get? Oh, this is where the graffiti artist comes <laughs> play. Yeah, graffiti. Yes. Oh, so, so uh, but also the best. Um, the best. It, the best because every <laughs> every one of them that he, he does end up killing, uh, a crow symbol eventually comes from somewhere. But yeah. again, that's in a, a thing. Blood that, puddle okay. or flowers surrounding the yeah. body. There's one scene in the first one. And I don't like it because it's not in the comic and it's like, okay, what the fuck? But Eric Draven draws like in lighter fluid and then the sets fire, it on yeah. fire. Yeah. And so now Big in this model. one, oh, yeah. I've they have to do, do it at every death. He has to leave his insignia somewhere, somehow around the dead body, including Iggy Pop, who ends up... Uh, he- Wait. Well, you're right. No. Did David Goyer write the uh, Ben Affleck Daredevil? I'm curious. I don't Google think it. so. Because there's a fire. Like, there's Daredevil that. That was in the trailer. That yep. was in there. So I'm wondering oh, yeah, if there's that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just like. It was just like what they were doing back it, then. I mean, it like, was. Don't yeah. you guys yeah. want to do it? I do. I've never gotten a chance to do this because I don't have grass. I'm willing to just like <laughs> Right? Torch. You want to leave your mark <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, wouldn't it be cool to. Or something. But wouldn't it be cool uh, to just done. like. That I've done. Just put your initials and yeah. like Yeah. Like Daredevil. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, we can do that. Yeah. Poirier, you know, we should, this is well, just doing put it on news? Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then he goes after Iggy Pop. See, this is where we're like, he should be going after Sarah. She's abducted. He goes after Iggy Pop and yeah. chases him down. I'm like, okay, maybe he's going to try and figure out where she's being held nope. or something. Um, his motorcycle, motorcycle chase. chase. Yep. Okay. It's a bad one. Yeah, yeah it's a really bad one. It's foggy, and you're going down the viaducts of Los Angeles, and then uh, right. you kill Iggy Pop. And yeah, he gets like impaled on something. Uh, part of the right. bike is it explodes. Yeah. Yeah. You think I'm afraid of you? Whatever Iggy mm-hmm. Pop is doing in this moment is interesting. Um, not necessarily good, but interesting the yeah. way he's reacting. And it's another just close up shot of his eyes as he's yelling. At yeah, it's too close. Think I'm afraid of you. Like yeah. he does some weird vocalization <laughs> I mean, my, in this Yeah, part. my thing is like. I don't have a problem with Iggy Pop because I think he's doing what he does. Sure, that's fine. It's not just, his fault. It, yeah, it's the way it's written and directed. Yeah, hundred percent. But he ends up, you know, turning around and 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 riding towards him on his motorcycle, which gets shot by Ash and blown up, and he gets blown off of it, which is pretty funny because yeah. he gets thrown out of that. Um, but he's he's got something. He's impaled with something in his stomach. Uh, you wouldn't know it. You had to like, oh, yeah. something's in his stomach. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's you, not purposeful. You kind of like see it. Out of focus in the shot. Yeah, like, yeah. it's just like what's come yeah. out of you, mm-hmm. brother. And this is the this is the downside, right? The horror of being killed by the guy who's who's been uh, reanimated by the crow. Because as you're dying, he's gonna sit down next to you <laughs> and and wax poetic oh, God. about the, the media. <laughs> you know, oh, it's oh, it's like bad. I'd be like, shut the fuck up and just yeah, kill me. Yeah, <laughs> um, he tortures his victims. Yeah. Uh, so then finally he's like, oh yeah, oh, I think the crow, like, uh, he gets crow vision like, uh, er- Eric Draven did <laughs> so you can see through the crow's eyes and the crow has found, uh, Judah uh. at the top of the, the, the penthouse. And so he's like, oh yeah, that's right. Sarah has been abducted. Yeah. And then away he goes to go rescue her. Mm-hmm. Now the seer has told Judah, right? What uh. you got to do is you got to capture yeah. and kill this crow. So he sets a trap. And catches the crow in his sex dungeon. The guys, actual crow. The actual the, the bird. Right. The yes. bird. Do you yeah. guys remember uh, the board game Mousetrap? Yeah. Yes. It took that's longer a, to that, set up than it did to play. Yeah, exactly, it was fine. Yeah. But that's this. That's yeah. how they capture yep. it. It's that little cage that comes yep. down. That bird had to sit on a very exact pl- yep. spot on the floor mm-hmm. for what felt like 10 minutes. Because that, yep. that thing dropped from a, a yeah. 20 foot ceiling. Mm-hmm. You would have think it would have flown away. And now having captured the bird. Mm-hmm. 
He fucks with it. He like slaps it around a little bit. He does. Yeah. This animatronic crow. That's mm-hmm. But stabbing the, because uh, he uses ceremonial daggers that mm-hmm. I think we last saw in the Omen, right? That was mm-hmm. the ones that he used to kill the Antichrist. Anyway, he uh, stabs the bird and he like, crucifies the, yeah. the bird. Yeah, he yeah. does the cruci- Yeah, because mm-hmm. then he gets yes. the stigmata on his hand. Mm-hmm. Who does? The crow. Ash. Mm-hmm. Ash, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Ash Corvin. And yeah. so he ends up falling off this building as he's scaling it, Batman. Like, because there's a Day of the Dead uh, celebration going on. Yes. Yeah. The first movie used Halloween a little bit because it's, you know, right. it's a goth. You Makes know. sense. Yeah. So this okay. one is like, we can't do that again. Right. So we're going to do Day of the Dead. <laughs> we're going to do so, Mexican Halloween. Yes, yeah. exactly. And Which we're in Los Angeles. Is that the day after Halloween? Yeah. Or like two days after, yeah. I think, yeah. So there's a big party in the street been. where we were saying like uh, Ash like has to go through the party where the Deftones are playing mm-hmm. to actually scale the building, and then he seems scared of all the people because right. a priest earlier told him that like the masks will frighten the spirits who are sticking around here too long. Uh, mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, man, they could have done this better. Like a lot of this movie, they could have done this better. <laughs> it didn't need to be done at all. It, no, it, it, didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> and it, you don't feel like the impact of any of it because if he had, had shown some hesitancy going into this moment, but he just fucking jumps over yeah, the wall. He jumps right in like a it. badass. He's going to go fuck some shit up. And then all of a sudden there's people around him. He's like, oh, 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 what? and we're like, what? The only, uh, I mean, I'm extrapolating. It was because of that scene with the priest earlier. Right. Explains yeah. what's happening there. Yeah. yeah. But again, we could have, could have hit that home a little bit harder. But it turns out that now he's been deprived of his power because right. the crow has been killed. This is copied from the original movie. I mean, this was a plot point in the original movie, right? That, uh, I don't remember, I don't remember, that. remember. Michael Wincott had uh, an Asian, it was ba- a Bai Ling, was his sister, right? Uh, who was like kind of on the spiritual realm and like we kill the crow and take his power or we kill the crow and, uh, and take away his power. Yeah. But here we're amping the stakes. Now we're going to take his power and, use and so uh i like this idea yeah of bad crow like you have good crow but then he takes his powers and then he gets the fucking pain on his yeah eyes because he drinks the, the blood of the crow yeah. mm-hmm. why does he have to put the pain on his eyes uh, fashion but here's the, <laughs> the thing why Doesn't how keep the sun out <laughs> what are his <laughs> he's what got are eye his, black on basically what's his crow really like quest that, that he has to undo <laughs> yeah. Like, what is his crow quest he has to undo? Like, if the crow is, like, brought back to fulfill a purpose and then goes back, if you drink the cl- crow's blood, what what is the rules for you then? Yeah. Uh, it, doesn't it doesn't make, make any, any sense. sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah. Uh, because, it shouldn't be contagious like this. Yeah. No. So I it should be you kill the crow and you kill the crow. Yeah. Like, it's just, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he yeah. If you kill the crow, he, he should, should be dead. dead. Yeah. yeah. That's, be, that's yeah. permanently. Yeah. That's well, it. it, or I can see what, See, there's the but original. This is the power of all crow. The original version of the ending, right, was by killing the crow, he kills uh, the link between the two worlds, right? Because he does see a vision of his son, uh, Ash does, at the Day of the Dead Festival. Like his son comes up, and then there's an ADR line that says, like, if you don't finish your mission, Daddy, we can't be together. That's not mm-hmm. what was in the original script. The original script was. Okay, you finished your mission. Basically, you got to come back. And uh, he's like, you know, I have to get to Sarah. So he goes off mission, right? Mm. The crow is killed. And so that means that he has to wander forever as a spirit on Earth. And then there's a scene in the end where he goes into, I think when he drops Sarah's body off in the in the chapel, he talks to a priest and he says, like, you know, there's many shadows in L.A. and I'm just going to be another one of them or something like mm-hmm. that. And so there's the idea you got this immortal guy running around who can be in sequels. Why is he immortal if they killed the crow? Because he can't he... go back to he's dead and he can't go back to the afterlife. So but I guess that power is gone. Wouldn't his immortality go away? Either? No, apparently not, because yeah. he can't go back. I think that's what they were originally tending. Maybe that's Ugh. why Weinstein said, you know what? Let's cut that out. <laughs> or it would force them to do sequels or something. I don't know. Yeah. So what we get is um, Judah takes the power of the crow and is able to survive. And his superpower uh, is now shirts. Because he wasn't wearing one for the yeah. rest of the movie. So shirts is his new superpower. But he can't be killed by shotgun blasts or uh, eventually impalements. Yeah. 
Because he's he's immortal now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little goofy, especially mm-hmm. with this actor's. This actor has a very specific voice, a very specific like pentameter with the way he speaks and everything. So it comes out very humorously mm-hmm. in yeah. these moments. Mm-hmm. Yes, when he's I always thought he was like, miscast. It's, it's not. Yes. Good. I think everybody's. A lot of people are miscast. Yeah. Yeah. I, right. I, I think they're all miscast because <laughs> yeah. none of them are very good. But he uses the power of all crows to fly Ash through with this. Yeah, yeah. Where all, well, where would all these crows come from? So this is again a callback <laughs> to the original movie okay. where it's like uh, I think uh, uh, Eric and I thought this was stupid again, not in the comic mm-hmm. book, but something you know when I have problems with the crow, it's this. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to give you all this pain all at once you know and mm-hmm. like kills the bad guy by transferring the pain that he's you know his uh okay. his angst yep. onto the guy that's and, no that's it he it's the power of angst yes mm-hmm. that's his power yes yes and so he uses Jesus that Christ. here mm-hmm. by somehow summoning by torpedoing he's like a fucking care bear he does the care yeah bear stare and with shoots <laughs> shoots crows at literally, this literally it's yeah. through his abdomen yeah, yeah. They, fucking fly care bear they fly they go yeah, yeah. The and then they impale the other guy like he gets t- run through by like a thousand crows that's how he dies yeah he's and, angst and, a lot and, better. and, he, and like, he warps he uh he just warps out of i know existence. i think it would have been better if like in the dark half they tore him apart right something the, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah let's go ghost and have him drag him to hell yeah yeah, yeah. i think that's Bring what the they were fly him off going into for yeah. they did not pull it, it, didn't off. Pull yeah, it off no they morphed him yeah, out well, of existence they literally yeah. like pick him up and carry him mm-hmm. like something something wouldn't that be better yeah, but no, I we get an awkward we get an awkward little fight thing where uh, Mia Kirshner is back here, um, and she gets stabbed she gets in the stabbed. stomach of the thing. Mm-hmm. And oh she, yeah, because oh, Judah briefly before he gets uh, uh, angsted <sighs> to, to death <laughs> yeah. by, the cyber, yeah. by all the crows that have carried other souls yep. uh, to Earth. So this has happened yeah. hundreds of times before. Uh, before that happens, yeah, Judah has Judah has the upper hand and strings. Uh, 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 Ash up on a light post, and oh, so yeah. Sarah saves, saves him, him by yeah. stabbing Judah in the face. But mm-hmm. he's able to just pull the dagger out. Yeah, why did the seer fucking give her the dagger? Like, it was why some was there sort a change of, of heart? Weapon? Yeah, yeah. Him? Why did she change her mind? Why? Why? The only there's because a she, shot. She saw a vision, and she's like, "It must come true." I'm, yeah, and because I saw, you're help. gonna be. The, you know, she the seer's telling Judah like you're gonna be like this awesome power once we kill the crow. But then when it happens, there's one shot where she she's seen trembling, mm. and then in the next scene she's freeing. So suddenly Sarah she's afraid bond. of him if he has the power. Is that what we're to take from it? Yes, sure. sure. I think that's what okay. they intend anyway. Cool. Yeah, I think she saw a vision. I think she saw a vision in which and she, she goes, saw, "Oh fuck no!" Yeah, basically, let's take your collar off. But well, yeah, mm-hmm. but I think she saw a vision that that showed her helping to get rid of Judah, and I think that was it. The, whatever reasoning was behind it doesn't matter to her or the audience or anything. I think she just saw it, and she's like, "I have a part to play in this, and I will do it." So Sarah's dead. Well, she gets stabbed. I fucking right? and she hate dies. This. What? Why? So she's so she's dead. She's dead. She's dead. Okay. And so she dies, and there's a painting that she's been working on the whole way through the fucking movie. That like, okay, it's surrounded by a crowd of people, uh-huh. a man cradling a dying woman. Uh-huh. It turns out the dying woman is her. Well. Uh-huh. And then the movie goes to an ending where she narrates, and yep. we see Ash and his son. In a swamp? Walking through the swamps of Louisiana <laughs> right, right. with a snake? A snake? And was it a snake? Yeah, it looks like it. Was a snake. snake. That child was carrying I a snake. I don't understand mm-hmm. what this was. I think this was so a, like is, a vision that the kid turned, uh, in, uh, like it started well, out all nice and then the kid turns evil well, and then he the wakes kid, up from a vision. The kid but is now wearing it. They just used it because the, they, they changed the ending. Yeah. yeah. And the kid's now wearing a leather jacket too. Yeah. Uh, They're both wearing leather jackets. Uh, so I bet you, yeah, that was supposed to be somewhere else. It was oh, yeah. just repurposed at the end. I they made so. up the ending. But the ending is completely unsatisfying yeah. because it's saying that, okay, the him and his kid get to be reunited, but she's like left out, right? He's not reunited no. with her. But and so you're I like, what know, was maybe. the point but of her being reunited in the, with the kid? Yeah, because you see them in the swamp. I see it, but he's but, but how? He's not dead, is he? Does he just go back? Yeah, because he drives off on his motorcycle and then apparently goes back. See, the logic he doesn't tra- work because they they, they, they didn't like, have it. They had to just cut together the uh, shots that they had. Yeah, so he just drives to the afterlife. He drives to the afterlife. Does he, does he take the freeway? Is this like how juice? does he get there? Yes. 
and the the dialogue the the voiceover the voiceover smooths it over you, yeah because the she voice says over smooths it over with yep. a quote that makes no sense mm-hmm. she's like they're reunited and it, uh, it's you not because love ending. is stronger than death love is stronger yeah okay that doesn't make sense i'm tired of talking about that <laughs> yeah, i'm also done yeah, it doesn't make sense. um Okay, so yeah. now we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna Movie's thank you for, thank you for listening this long. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. it if you got here with <laughs> yeah. us. Uh, now we're gonna go around You're the table. You're strong for sticking it out. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna tell you what we thought. Well, I mean, it's it probably a foregone conclusion, <laughs> but we're gonna tell you what we thought of the movie individually. <laughs> uh, be a shocker! <laughs> but first, first, first. We're gonna do other read, people have thoughts about this. We're movie? gonna read some of your mail. That's right, they do. So I'm sure we're they gonna do. we're gonna yeah. read some I'm sure of those. They do. Oh, and curious. in order to find out what they think about this movie, we're gonna have to summon our mailman Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why? Thank you, Igor. I hope he wasn't watching this. Did anyone cover his eyes? I don't want him He's to be influenced by like this. this. He doesn't right? need to see all those boobies. <laughs> yeah. I like that he is wearing the crow makeup for yeah. this episode. That was nice of him to that's participate. Just his no, he's, that's, he's <laughs> that's a big Sting fan. <laughs> and see, now nobody knows if it's the crow or, or Sting. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you remember before this remake uh, that Luke Evans was going to be the crow? A lot, all, a lot of people. Jason Momoa. Momoa. Was gonna Jason be the crow. Momoa. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot, a lot of people were going to yeah. be the crow. Which I don't think Bill Skarsgård is necessarily a bad no, choice. I don't think so either. Choice. I think it's all the other choices that are bad about this movie. Yeah. Like the the, to the make design, yeah. to make it, and the it, director. It, it doesn't have the goth. You no. Know, it's like, it's a goth classic. It's got that Diane Tord look, just, you know, that's like the Juggalo Joker look of the, the Suicide Squad, you know? Like, yeah. that's the now. Which is making that's its the way into now. a Frankenstein movie starring Christian Bale. Which also looks bad. Also looks bad. Yeah. Like, so this is a, just the look mm-hmm. nowadays. Mm. Is that the Maggie Gyllenhaal one? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The bride. Yeah. The bride, yeah, the bride. Yeah. yeah. On paper, this should all be so good, but it's not. <laughs> um. Okay, well, we should tell the good folks at oh, home. Yeah. Who are listening intently right now? How they can participate on this uh, interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, or X at Sat Freak Show, or by email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com, or on threads and Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie. Mm, please avenge us, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> which was The Crow City of Angels. Amos Martinez writes in and says, I actually think this one's really underrated it's not perfect but neither was the first one i've always liked how unhinged and all over the place vincent perez plays ash and didn't just try to copy what brandon lee did i'm excited for this episode <laughs> oh no i'm no. just gonna go right into I'm that sorry <laughs> half I'm sorry price, the half price horror podcast says i saw this as a double feature double feature with the island of dr moreau the day it came out wow. and wow. for years my friend would only refer to it as the other movie we saw that day because <laughs> he felt like he was insulted did they call it the island of, it the of, of dr mccrow <laughs> uh, sorry i had to get that one out there <laughs> the other movie <laughs> the other movie, that's good <laughs> Uh, Travis Legler <laughs> writes in and says the crow movies were never really my thing and I still stand by the joke that the first movie is just Robocop for goths. I have a feeling this review may be more fun than watching the movie. Mm-hmm. I hope so. <laughs> it's also ghost for goths as we yeah. established. Yeah. Uh, Teresa Ann says I like the sequel and the soundtrack was a banger too. Mike Welch says Iggy Pop finger sucking creeps me out. Uh, I didn't like that. Should. It should. This movie yep. ugh, was texturally it's gross. gross. It, yeah, yeah. It's gross. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joshua Owens says, "Oh man, it's crazy that I saw this one before I saw The Crow." Uh, oh, with no. Brandon Lee, but I was born in 86, so there's a few movies I've seen out of order. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot as a kid, but I've not revisited these movies in a long time. You really only only need to watch the first and second installments, and we can pretend the other ones mm-hmm. didn't happen. I think we're going to add another one to that list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Miller says, the original Crow is one of my favorite movies, but City of Angels is such a mess thanks to the studio getting involved. I've revisited this one many times over the years, hoping it will improve, and every time I come away feeling like it was such a missed opportunity, while mm-hmm. not the outright 
quite enjoyable train wreck that is Wicked Prayer. This is more <laughs> squandered potential, which feels worse. Also, for the record, I think the upcoming one looks like absolute shit. Mm. I've seen the trailer too many times. I can't watch it anymore. I'm and, so uh, sick of the, seeing it. It does look yeah. bad. It's mm-hmm. on my Facebook feed every time I, mm-hmm. I load it up. Uh, last week, I don't we- think it looks that bad, to tell you the truth. Maybe it's just me. Well, we'll, we'll find we'll out. Find out. Yeah, that guy's gonna, track record is uh, zero oh and two. Uh, dear Brailler, we'll, we'll bring you the review of the new yeah. crow once we've seen it. Mm-hmm. Last week we watched Godzilla minus one. Adam yeah, Kaler says I just finished watching Godzilla minus one, and not a, while I'm not a big fan of disaster or giant monster movies, this one nailed it. Mm-hmm. Across the board, everything was perfect. Even at times where I might question how a plan would work, the movie answers it for me anyway. Mm-hmm. It looks great. It has depth and a bunch of heart. It's the best movie of twenty twenty. I, um, I, yeah. I rewatched the ending of it before I came here tonight. Did you? Because like, I was listening to our podcast. Yeah. I'm just like, God damn, that was good. Was really good. <laughs> Sometimes I get tempted to just message you guys, is your war over yet in the group chat? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just going to be, no. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's never going to be over. <laughs> never over. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, although my favorite of the Monsterverse movies was the first movie, that's Godzilla, the Gareth mm-hmm. Edwards one yeah. in Kong Skull Island, I admit I tapped out from the most recent one deciding that I don't need to see it. You have to admit in this era of connected cinematic universes, the monster verse is at least the most successful one outside of the MCU. Money. I can't probably. blame them. Although it doesn't feel like they're trying to get other franchises off the ground besides Kong yeah. versus Godzilla. It does a lot of money overseas. Those yeah. movies do. Yeah. So like the transformers. Mm-hmm. Movies. Yep. They, they they're got... not really made for us. They're nope. made for the rest of the world. Yeah. Because you don't, Mm-hmm. I still maintain you can export a movie that you don't really have to understand. Yep. It, yeah. It's built into it. Yep. You understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yep. You don't have to explain much in dialogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called The Best of the Best. <laughs> yes, we did. Kryptonian Orphan says years later, Eric Roberts ended up getting beaten up by the Batman. I guess those karate skills didn't follow him. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Uh, yes. Correct. All right. And well, Luke, as we know, he was not the best of the best. No, he was not. <laughs> Spoiler, he's not. Episode. Yeah. Uh, Lucas Accardo writes in and says, the great Chris Penn. Terrible loss. Mm-hmm. He steals the show in every scene he's in in Reservoir Dogs. And I always laugh when Harvey Keitel is busting his balls about taking Tim Roth to the doctor. And he yells, all right, Mr. Fucking Compassion, I will call somebody. <laughs> that was my best. I, I miss that specific genre of character actor that Chris Penn occupied. Yeah. I don't feel like it quite exists the same way yeah. it did but yeah he's a scene stealer every time he shows yeah. up he yeah, he takes it he really does mm-hmm. yep. mr fucking Rip. passion mm-hmm. <laughs> classic that's a great so movie good. Mm-hmm. classic oh. uh okay well thank you uh each of you yes for writing in much. we appreciate it now we're gonna go around yeah. the table this is the moment you've been waiting for what do we think of the crow the city of angels <laughs> Starting with Sean, mm-hmm. I hate this movie. Mm-hmm. Moving on, mm-hmm. uh, I, I yeah, I, it's it's just not it's not good. It's yeah, uh, yeah. writing uh, everything we said. It's not good. Mm-hmm. I hate this movie from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. It's just I, I'm 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 mad at you a little bit, um, <laughs> just a little bit. But I'll forgive you. I in, brought a in, sequel, in Sean. You did. <laughs> oh, he's you got you there. You did, <laughs> and you think that would be the way to my heart. <laughs> No, I hate sequels as a general <laughs> principle. And this one is not going to help. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a general principle. You hate sequels, so you brought the worst. So you brought yeah. the worst yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, see Sean? All, yeah, okay, all right. So this was aimed at me. Okay. Yeah. This is punitive towards me. I, I understand now. All right. Uh, yeah, I did not like this movie. I don't. I, I, no. Nope. Holly, what would you think? Yeah, no, this, this movie is a, just a trash heap uh, from top to bottom. It's fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. The only, like... The wrong director, wrong writer, wrong cast. The only person that was appropriately put on cast and crew for this movie was the graffiti artist. Yes. yes. I maintain it. <laughs> job. Fantastic uh, graffiti, best I've ever seen. I want to know the crow's name because he did good. The crow was fantastic. There's a lot more yeah, crow good. in this movie yeah. than yeah. the original. The like, bird acting, bird acting spot mm-hmm. on. Loved it. Crow the bird. Feeding, lands on bird that acting. guy and then he, he takes lands off. really well. He comes in from off screen, flies right at the camera. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Some of those flying down the yeah. alley yep. shots. Carries pretty good. The fucking movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's Every, a star. I hope I want to see him. Star. I want to see him in more things. He's a star. Everything else about this movie was just hot garbage, and I want nothing to do with it ever again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Michaela, what do you think? I, I think that you gotta. We we talked while we were watching the movie about how not goth makeup doesn't work on everyone. And then when it's bad goth makeup on top of that, it just like 
doesn't work even more. And I think you have to have a certain like swagger and confidence to pull off that look. And this actor like is hunching over so much of the movie and mumbling and not carrying the confidence and the like kind of badass attitude you should if you're wearing a leather duster and face paint, right? Yeah. Um, so that's a big problem. It's just a bad casting choice and it is so egregiously bad in a sea of bad that it's kind of crazy it still stands out as bad as it is because everything else is so bad around it. Um I did not like this. I'm tired of talking about it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I didn't like it. Pass. Colin. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think it's kind of a crime in some ways that they made a sequel to The Crow. Um, let alone four. Yes, let alone four, that it keeps going on. It does feel like it's a, the original movie I love. It's a monument to uh, Brandon Lee at mm. this point. Um, you know, I mean, it's built on two tragedies. <laughs> You're like tempting fate by making a second one. It feels like a naked cash grab. Um, I mean, even I remember, um, you know, when the original Crow came out on on DVD, it had been directed by Alex Preuss, the the Mm. original, you know, now he's gone on to do uh, Gods and and kings uh or no what was that gods, uh, and gods, gods of egypt sorry i gotta bring that soon yeah, yeah. Oh, wow All right. um but at the time i liked alec <laughs> Pro- alex Pro- he did dark city i like dark yeah city we watched also. dark city but alex Proyas wasn't on the commentary track of the crow Uh-oh. there was a guy named jeff most who oh, was like the guy who, who yes, produced most. the soundtrack album. <laughs> so like these were naked cash grabs of like, we're going to have soundtracks. We're going to have like, uh, uh, you know, st- fashion things and rings and whatever. Yeah, and build, hot topic. We will build like a, hot topic. Off we're going to make a superhero franchise. How, how much of Jeff was on the soundtrack? Wait, what? I'm, he, I'm guessing he produced all the songs or something. The like, Thank you. Uh, there it is. The most. The most. Um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe we call him Jeff too much. Too much <laughs> Jeff. Too much Jeff on this. Uh, yeah. So it does kind of feel like everything after The Crow, uh, I am not a fan of th- that it exists. Like, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, on just that basis, you know, um, the movie itself. Okay. Like, okay. Well, then you have the all the people who got work putting the thing together. Tim Pope has a terrible experience, quits Hollywood. I think it's badly cast. I like Mia Kirshner. I didn't think she was really showcased well here. Mm-hmm. Um, it does have, I guess, uh, that like repugnant um, goth industrial um, production design and look and atmosphere to it. I didn't want to say anything when we started watching the movie, but because when that started coming up, I was just like, this movie makes me feel bad. Yeah, yeah. It's just all. I of think that. now looking back at it, you're like, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it plays everything like it, the aggro of the characters is too much. The production di- design and the grossness, it, everything's all accentuated, yep. mm-hmm. you know, because this is what they feel that the audience wanted and the audience rejected it. I think, uh, yeah, it's a terrible, terrible movie. Um, <laughs> I just think they're all bad. I mean, like, I can't say that like the third one is like, it's bad. It loses the whole goth look though, oh, no. which I guess is part of why, you know, I was like, Oh, this one, at least in the trailer kind of had a look. Um, See, the, and this is, this is the freak show. Um, this is the pact is that since you, hated it we forgive you oh yeah yes oh, okay if you, if you liked it would be pissed yeah, yeah that's why oh. i was only a little <laughs> yeah. i was saving it to see what this was yeah. no i wouldn't defend it um <laughs> and i but i didn't actually want to bring the no the, i wouldn't the defend crow. It. the saturday night freak show yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the crow feels like it's uh, too good to be mm-hmm. here yeah uh, I, say, I mean maybe for not, as much as you love the we crow, talked about it recommend this, you know, i wouldn't have problems i was with waiting it. to bring the crow at like halloween you know yeah. sure, sure. for years i've had it on the but now it seems like the time with the remake on yeah. the mm-hmm. you know oh, yeah. this weekend finger on the yeah. pulse you gotta do it yep so uh um, that's ending you know, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. here at this table is uh, giving you a hard pass. Mm-hmm. Is what hard. I'm, I'm getting the on the Crow passes. City of Angels. Never should have existed. Harder mm-hmm. than Thomas Jane in a peep show booth. <laughs> pass. <laughs> pass. All right, you got to end it right there. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's it. That's okay. it. <laughs> All right. Next week we are going to watch a movie that's chosen by Sean. 
What are we watching next week? You've got to look at it. It better be we, a goddamn we, palate we, cleanser. We need some redemption, and yeah. when we need redemption, who do we go to? We go to Red Brown. Oh, oh wow, We're already. Watching... Oh, yes! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> After years of talking yes! about it. <laughs> Doing it. I've never seen the whole thing, so oh. I'm looking forward All to this. All right. I'm All excited. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, the, yeah. <laughs> you can so look I, it up. I'm calling for this, because yeah. just like, cause after this, which is like, we need we need something. Okay. Only Reb can cleanser. save us now. Only Reb can save us now. <laughs> yeah, you can Only look Reb it up. It's, it's just, world. it's, yeah. a, it's yeah. a, a series of S's is the title. Yes. yes. Uh, but it does, you can rent yeah. it, so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, s- mm-hmm. next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. He was Captain America. He, he can do he's it. He's like the crow for our podcast. He's going to avenge us from this movie. Yes. Yes. <laughs> After we were murdered by it. <laughs>